Well, tell us about yeah. our current market now. What? Because obviously, back when we started, it was a buyer's market. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of people who wanted to sell, and wasn't a ton of buyers. And because we were focused on helping buyers and providing the finance, and we had a lot of leverage with the sellers. And then obviously that changed within a few years because all that cheap money from all those non-conforming 100% type type of loans, the interest rates being low, and all that money being pumped into real estate, then it flipped from being a buyer's market to a seller's market. And then the, the type of loan products, we, most of our customers were first-time home buyers. So if they were buying a $200,000 house, they maybe have three or four grand to put down on it, and we're doing 100% financing, asking for the seller to pay some closing costs, and then they're looking at we got like five offers here and they're putting like 50 grand down because each one of those buyers had sold their house that they bought for a lot cheaper and made a lot of equity because those things had appreciated a lot. So we had a lot to put down. And then here we are, we got a client that's barely got three grand versus somebody that's got 50, 70, a hundred thousand to put down cash, closing a, you know, pre-approved financing. And with that kind of money down, you're, you're going to get approved. And so the seller's looking at that and like, we got this weird 100% financing and they want closing costs paid and this guy's going to pay all the closing costs and they got all this money to put Which down. Go, yeah. So we would just, we get outbid basically. And so we're kind of, that is kind of flipped again. So can you talk about the difference between buyer market, seller market, what we went through at the time? Because obviously, based on what's going on in the economy, there's times to buy investment properties and there's times to sell. The idea is to buy low, sell high. And so the time to buy investment real estate is when nobody's buying because then it's cheap. And you had a bunch of clients that were – they were all from the Middle East, right? Recently, I mean? The last 10 years or so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So investors, they yeah. literally had hundreds of millions of dollars to invest in real estate. And so like when nobody was buying, Bottom these guys world. come in and buy stuff for pennies in a dollar. So can you talk about like current market, right, right. that difference? What what kind of real estate should people be buying or selling right, right now? Right. A lot of a lot of points thrown out in a short period of time. So You can handle it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'm just trying to itemize <laughs> Uh, certain sections. So going back to when the housing market hits the bottom and all these foreclosures faced and and came on the market and financing wasn't really available in what, 2009, 2010, because every bank was cautious, new guidelines through Fannie Mae and Freddie. So it dried up a lot of the buyers because nobody felt or was able to qualify Mm -hmm. because of their financial situation is that, um, the foreclosure and the short sale market went nuts. So you had a lot of inventory and every bank wanted to get rid of their toxic assets uh, as quickly as possible to maintain their their sheets and, and their, their balance sure. sheets, I want to say. So the local market or the local, the US, a lot of people were very cautious investing their leftover cash into something not knowing where the, the, the financial market's gonna go in the next few years. So a lot of overseas investors surfaced and came from all over the world, from China, uh, Canada especially, uh, Tanzania, Dubai, you name it, Russia, because they felt, you know what? These condos or houses, which used to be uh, 300,000 are now selling for 70,000, so for 30 cents, 20 cents on the dollar. So I see upsides here, I see potential. And I'm just going to buy them cheap because, as history always showed, we have an up and we have a down every seven to eight years. In the the real estate market. cycle. Correct. So uh, I, I got lucky when I was basically just about, I had nothing left in my bank account. I had the right phone call and I started selling these, these small condos for twenty, thirty thousand dollars 30000 So, and I sold volume for many, many years because the rental market was still good. People didn't want to buy. They wanted to the rent. So... The purchase price or acquisition price versus the rental income brought a very good and strong yield to the investor. Back then, eight to ten to twelve percent on their cash investment, which you couldn't do in the in, in the stock market or in any other compatible uh, business to get returns in double digits. Sure. So those investors who bought ten years ago, where there was plenty of inventory is now looking at 2020, 2021, where we have no inventory or very limited inventory 
and everybody wants to buy and invest. If it's for their own financial situation to improve their living situation or just to invest money because the rental market is so strong as well, um, these properties now are being sold. So if you are a buyer's agent in today's market, it's very competitive and you have to have multiple attempts to maybe successfully find the right property and find or get the right bid for your client. So I happen to be a lot for the last 12 months to 18 months on the listing side because my investors liquidating some of their smaller and lower assets in the $100,000, $150,000 range because they tripled their investment from 10 years wow. ago. So, and I hold the power, you know, basically as a listing agent, because I know what I can price it. We're breaking records literally every month in volume and in sales price. That means the appreciation right now is being uh, basically brought by motivated buyers. So a property worth $100,000 60 days ago sells for $110,000. 110 next month's going to go to 115. Not because it's over leveraged by mortgages, it's because of the buyer wanting to participate and invest their funds to secure a property like this. Same goes in the three or four or five hundred. Are these people that market. live here or are these people that have moved here? Mostly people who live here or are moving to the state from. So, so like what percentage states. of people are you dealing with that are moving here, moving to Florida and buying real estate? Uh, I would say um, at this time, 60% at least is domestic. Meaning they came from out of state. Yes, come from out of state. They want to buy uh, for their son. And where the are they? Member. What state are they leaving? Why are they coming here? Um, to the mostly free state from the of West Florida. Coast. Yeah, from the uh, you know California. So, yes, California, for example. We have New York. We have Boston. We have still Canadians, uh, which you know, obviously international clientele. They now. don't like Hitler and hair gel too much. No, I don't get that. But. Gavin Newsom. Oh, uh, okay, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, so they, they're buying, they're investing, and uh, because rental rates are, the investor itself, not only the owner-occupant or the second home buyer, the investor is still buying in an up market. And if it's really a buyer's market, you have five buyers for one property minimum. Price range from 100000 to almost eight 900000 You have multiple offers within a week wow. or days. And they're selling based on the terms and conditions supplied. It's you know? like shooting fish in a barrel, right? So At this moment in time, it's almost scary because, as I mentioned to you guys at lunch, is you have to choose one contract. And out of five contracts, there's maybe one investor and four are owner-occupants who have an emotional investment in that bit. They really need it, want it, right. because they know there's nothing compatible out there. And the real estate I'm reselling is all high-quality stuff because I – recommended my investors 10 years ago. This is what you have to buy in order to do the appreciation right. you envision. So we deal with high quality stuff only, close to you know good employment, good areas, I4, whatever it is. But we're dealing with emotions of, of agents who have to then you know give the information over to their buyer and they have to disappoint them. You know, I used to be on that side a couple of weeks ago with one particular buyer who uh, had a certain amount of down payment, didn't have sufficient money for closing costs. It was in the four five hundred thousand dollar range. I looked at two three properties within a day. They had multiple offers above asking without appraisal contingencies. I couldn't couldn't compete. If you have five percent or three percent down, you have no money for closing costs. You don't have extra cash on the side. You can apply if you have a right. deficiency in value of the appraisal to you know the purchase price. You're out. And, and the seller is, is, is being spoiled these days. So if you sit on a portfolio of real estate, you want to liquidate, that's the time to do it right now. The time is to sell. The interest rates are still low. People have money in their bank, cash. Uh, economy is going well, from, from my experience. Uh, it's the time to do it. Now, what are these sellers doing now, these investors? They are selling their assets off. But the majority of them put it in a 1031 exchange because they don't want to pay capital gains, especially if you're a foreigner, you have to pay that. So uh, they defer their, their, their yields, their, their profits by reinvesting it into alternative real estate. If it's commercial, if it's a residential, if it's higher priced property from a one-bedroom car and they go to a three-bedroom townhome, new construction, whatever you can actually get your hands on because even that is very limited. Right. 
So I have clients flying in here in September. I have a few million dollars to spend. I have yet to find something to offer them. So there's a lot of pressure on me now because I will be put on the other side now as a buyer's agent. So again, but what do you do? You do your research. You, you step outside your comfort zone of the areas you usually sell. You, you talk to other people. And I, God bless, I had enough contacts to developers and builders. I've set up some meetings next week. And you know I can probably get a piece of the pie without getting outbid. But it's always a challenge, but it's a very, very lucrative market right now for the seller. So let me ask you both of you questions, because here's the thing. Being a growing up a, a poor knucklehead kid who who would you say if you if first time home buyers and I know the, the the even the prices you're talking about, do you think it's if you if you're twenty something year old person, it's now the time to buy a house? To live in? Well, I mean eventually it's gonna it's going to go down the other way as soon as the Fed starts raising the rate because eventually – I mean we're already seeing it. We're seeing inflation in the real estate because you got – it's a supply and demand thing. This is economics 101. And so you got a lot of people, 60 percent as Andy said, coming from out of state, moving here. So you got a large number of buyers chasing a small number of houses. And so they're bidding and bidding up the price. People are paying cash. Because especially when they're moving from California and some of these areas, these these small tiny houses are just millions of dollars or nine hundred thousand for like a nine hundred square foot two bedroom one bath. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You can come here and buy a really nice house for mm. that kind of money, and so and and now you're you own a, a house free and clear, right? And so you got other people that are that are moving because they're tired of the they like freedom. And we're the free state of Florida, and they don't like being told what to do. They don't like, hey, you're going to have to – you can only go eat in a restaurant if you're vaccinated or you wear a mask or you can't open your restaurant. You can only do takeout and having their – and a lot of these people work remotely, and they're like, the quality of life sucks here. So for the first time ever, I think the last stats I saw, California shrunk by like 280,000 people. So there were more people moving out of California than moving into California wow. for like the first time ever because people hate it. And so people that are more um, individualistic, believe more in liberty and self-reliance and self-determination, they're voting for with their feet and they're coming to Florida. So And then the money's cheap. So it's e even if they want to do financing, I mean, the cost is at a low because sure. – what the government did just totally wrecked the economy, and it, it bankrupted millions of people. And you know, one of the number one reason why people get divorced and their relationship ends is because of financial problems. So you got millions of people got financial problems. You got millions of people that got rental properties, just mom and pop got a few houses, and now it's their retirement and their income. And then the tenants or the government says, "Hey, you to the tenants, you don't have to pay rent," and they can't kick their tenant out. And the tenants like, "Hey, we, we're not paying rent." And I know you've got some clients that, because he's got a property mm -hmm. management company that are in that situation. And so the mortgage company don't give a damn if your money. client ain't paying. If you don't pay, the mortgage company's going to foreclose on your property. And then these people are getting wiped out. And there's, there's no relief for them. And it's just absurd. And so you're bankrupt in a lot of mom and pop property owners, people that they work their whole lives, they worked a job, they saved a little pension, they bought a you know a handful of rental properties throughout their life, they still got mortgages on them, but you know, they bought them a long time ago over the last 20, 30 years, and now they're retiring and that's how they pay their bills. Right. So they got positive cash flow. And now all of a sudden they still got mortgage payments, but now they got no cash flow. So not only can they not make their mortgage payments on that, they can't pay their regular bills. And there's no there's no bailout money come for them and the government says hey you can't kick your tenant out even though they're not paying and so you look at that and you go is that just an oversight because they wrote a bill and they were stupid and didn't recognize that they just left millions of people's you know mom and pop real estate investors their asses twisted in the wind or maybe it was willful maybe they're like hey screw them we'll, we'll bankrupt these people and the companies like blackrock there was a big story about blackrock going in and just overpaying for like they're buying all the houses in these communities and then turning them into rental properties. And so it's almost like they're going and they're buying all these properties, whether it's foreclosure or they're just you know paying so much money for these houses, people sell them. And then you got the government basically forcibly bankrupting 
a bunch of people whose livelihoods depended on their rental properties. Right. And so they lose their properties and their source of income. The bank gets and the bank sells them. And companies like BlackRock or other investors come in and, and buy those properties. And that's unconscionable. That's wrong. You know, you got you think of you work your whole life. You get you're seven years old. What are you gonna do? You just lost your income. Yeah, you got Social Security, but that was just some of the money that you took in. Yeah. And now you, maybe you got a mortgage on your house because you bought a nice house with your wife, figuring that you got plenty of cash flow, have a really killer house because you got three or four rental properties. Now that's gone, and now you can't make you know, with Social Security. You can't make your mortgage payments. So now you lose your main house. Is that right? Is it fair? Is it just? I mean, that's fucked. Yeah, that's and so those right. things are happening. And you, I know you've got tenants that you manage your properties, and the tenants are like, or I mean, uh, property owners, and their tenants aren't paying. Well, the the good thing, just to answer your question quickly, is it still the right time to buy for a young twenty five year old? Absolutely, it's always the right time to buy real estate if you have the proper means and financing in place. If you have cash, or if you have the finance, interest rates are still very low. And you need to compare, am I paying a mortgage equal to what my rent is, vice versa? So with owning a property, buying a property, financing, you have tax advantages. You don't have as a rent. Your rent goes in every month and does nothing. It helps the, the homeowner or the investor, but doesn't help you at all. You can build equity. You can write off your interest rates. You can write off your property tax, depending on what your tax bracket is. So sure. generally speaking, yes, we're in an up market, but it's still a good time to invest in real estate for your own personal use, a second home, or as an investment. Speaking about investment and, and us dealing with investors basically uh, seven days a week and um, the situation of non-paying tenants over the last 18 months. Since the CDC gave a card blanche for people uh, during the pandemic, not because they were sick or something, just because it's a pandemic, they were exempt from paying rent. The simple way to explain it. So if you have a tenant who says, I got affected by COVID, I cannot make my rent payment, you have to take the word for it. They don't have to prove to us, hey, I lost my job, or I have a disability, or I have COVID for the last six months. There's no requirement to verify and confirm it to us. So the investor is the one who has taken the financial hit because the government allows that. So, or has allowed it for the last few years. Now, I'm not saying people didn't lose their job uh, or, or there were other instances where they may or may not be able to make their rent payment. Right. My personal experience has been much differently. So that that has been used to a financial advantage for a tenant not to make their monthly rent obligations. So as of tomorrow, the Florida Supreme Court ruled that the so-called eviction process can now occur. That means over the last 12, 18 months, there were rulings every single month and been extended that you cannot evict a delinquent tenant on their property. So as the news confirmed this morning, we have over, what, three and a half, 3.8 million people who are behind in their properties and their rents. Wow. They're now all being able to be evicted by the landlord slash their attorney. As a real estate professional or as a property manager, we can't evict people. We can only hire an attorney or the owner has to do it themselves. So we are going through it right now. I think we have three or four people who have been delinquent by over five months. So our job is we are working for the homeowner. We work, we're investment brokers. We, you know, we make sure that the investment we were able to sell or basically our investor sure. does bloom and bring the return they're expecting. Now, nobody expected a pandemic to come to prevent things from happening. You know, lifestyle changes, uh, whatever it might be. So now we are able to enforce payment slash or you have to move out. Unfortunately, we cannot sustain or the owner, not me, the owner cannot sustain to have somebody in their property because not their paying. expenses, if it is mortgaged, as Corey says, they continue. The bank is not going to say, I'm going to forbear the property. You have to pay me back because the tenant can't pay you. That doesn't fly unless you want to ruin your credit. But the positive thing for majority, not for all of them, the majority of my investors, their properties are free and clear. So they don't have the issue of losing out on mortgage payments. But property taxes, insurance, liability insurance, association dues, there are constant expenses you cannot put on hold. They have to get paid. 
So there's always an expense. There's always a risk involved for an investor because even if it's a non-paying tenant, if something does happen within their unit, AC stops working, there's a flood, the plumbing, you still have to perform these repairs at an expense and you think, well, I'm not going to fix the water heater or the AC. Not paying. I haven't gotten rent for six months, you know? Doesn't work like that, you know? You'll have to still follow through. There's rules and regulations of what you can and cannot do, um, but you still have to continue with doing it. And most of these homeowners do not understand or don't want it because they feel they've been doing done wrong by the occupant, the tenant, right. and therefore they don't deserve well, to have the right life. Here. But unfortunately, we live in a democratic world. Things have to be performed according to law and statute. So um, this is all going to change. So as of tomorrow, the evictions we've filed, they've been sitting. So uh, they've been sitting with a judge to decide what to do. So and starting Monday, you're going to probably have 3 million evictions being filed. So that means till the first filing, if you haven't filed yet, gets processed or the 50th one, it's going to take months, wow. six months sometimes to wow, get maybe a judgment. So there's still a grace period unwillingly. You have to give the tenant simply because the courts can't perform quick enough. They don't even have the manpower. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be the next headache coming right around. So. I'm sure a lot of attorneys recommended their clients, hey, listen, file whatever you can file last month, the month before, and let it sit. Let it be processed, that you have your, your case number, you know, let it be served to the tenant. You can go literally all the way to before the judge can issue a writ. So they can't do it till Monday because now they're allowed yeah, to do wow, so. So, however, you know, filing eviction is one thing. The tenant still has the opportunity to contest that eviction. Oh, I can't work. I have half a leg or whatever they're going to tell you, you know. So they have 15 days to contest it. But they must place the deficiency balance or the outstanding amounts of money into the clerk of registry court. So that means unless they put money in. They can't fight it. Correct. So that's what we're, you know, and I mean, if they can suddenly, well, why didn't you pay us? But since the last 24 hours, this news has become popular. Oh, that's great. The fan. I'm, beginning, I'm getting email from emails from these delinquent tenants who wouldn't want to speak to us <laughs> prior to. <laughs> oh, I get money from this guy and this guy tomorrow. Can you hold? You can't. Once you accept any kind of money, if it's a dollar or if it's a hundred dollar, your case gets thrown out. You start from scratch. So that's been my experience. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a professional in that, you know, section of law. I know about it, but I, you know give you only my personal experience based on what my attorneys are telling us but you have to follow through if somebody wants to pay you decline payment can't do it during a situation like that anyways so that's that section so when it comes to real estate obviously in my humble opinion because i work with this guy for five years and even though we butted heads and i wrote about it and mastering yourself all this stuff and they're like god Corey, you're pretty harsh about the things you said about andy and your business partners it's like these we've always been real with one another and there's nothing I wrote about that I wouldn't say to his face and haven't said to his face and a lot worse and and vice versa. But when it comes to real estate, whether it's property management or if you got questions about mortgages or if you should buy a house, if you should sell your house, if you're thinking about investing in real estate, there's nobody better than Andy Cooner. And I totally feel comfortable, even after all these years highly recommend him because he's he was always a top producer he was a top dog in my shop and you guys obviously have heard him talk throughout the videos and he knows what he's talking about and obviously he was i taught him a lot he already knew a lot but and he's learned a lot since and he's just he's an absolute master of his craft and so if you got questions in real estate or mortgages or investing in real estate he is the man so i would definitely hire him in a second and he's done work for me as as an agent as vice versa I, i've coached him as we've heard talk about over the years through different relationships and even now his current wife and he's he's just awesome at it so if you got questions or you'd like to hire him to consult he's the man to talk to the audience i hope you guys did enjoy our segment today and uh, hopefully you got some information and some value out of it if you'd like to uh, find out more about real estate property management real estate investing um, a mortgage, heart money loans, anything related to the real estate financial market, feel free to reach out to me. My number and my email will be displayed below.
You guys be well.